Hey guys, welcome back to Pete's Behavioral Insights and Theories, aka Pete's Bits. Today we're going to be asking the question, can money buy happiness? But before we do that, can I just say an enormous thank you to you guys for all the love that you've been showing the channel. This week we recently passed 700 subscribers, which is an insane number of people. I can't believe that 700 people uh, would be willing to watch some kid in his bedroom talk about behavioral economics. But nevertheless, I am so grateful for all the support that you've been showing me. And I really hope you continue to enjoy my content. If you're watching this and you haven't yet subscribed, Come on, join the party, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and let's get it going. All right, on with the video. So you've probably heard the phrase, money can't buy happiness. Well, in this video, I'm going to tell you that according to behavioral economics research, that's not really true. In 2010, Thinking Fast and Slow author, the godfather of behavioral economics, Daniel Kahneman, wrote a paper with his Princeton colleague, Angus Deaton, about this exact topic, about whether having more money leads to more happiness. And what did he find? Well, from his survey of US Americans and over 450,000 responses, Kahneman and Deaton concluded that actually more income does lead to more happiness, but only up to a certain point. You see, the relationship between money and happiness was logarithmic, which means that at a certain point, the benefits of having more money didn't really translate into significant changes in people's well-being or happiness. So you might be wondering, what is that point? And according to their data, it was around 75,000 US dollars, and that's back in 2010. And this finding is also supported by a more recent survey from 2017, and this one had even more responses. This was 1.7 million people on a worldwide scale, and they found similar results. And their results found that the satiation point for emotional well-being and income was again around 60 to $75,000. So is that the end of the story? Does everyone above $75,000 have the same level of happiness and well-being? No, of course not. People's individual happiness and well-being is dependent on many different factors other than just pure income. But I was curious about whether there was something that all of us could do, no matter how much income we earn, that would increase the amount of happiness we receive from the money that we spend. And that's where this famous study from Michael Norton at Harvard comes into play. So in this famous 2008 study from Michael Norton, he gave 46 participants either $5 or $20, and then gave them instructions on how to spend it. In one group he told them, I want you to spend this money today and buy something for yourself. Whereas the people in the other group were told, I want you to spend this money on somebody else. And then they simply took their subjective well-being before and after spending the money. And what the results of this study found was that those people who spent money on somebody else ended up having a much greater increase in their well-being than those people who spent it on themselves. And the cool part about this finding was that it didn't matter whether they spent $5 or $20 on the gift, it seemed that just the act of spending your money on somebody else in a thoughtful and meaningful way was the thing that was driving the happiness increase and it didn't really matter how much money you were giving, just the fact that you were giving was the most important thing. And what's really cool about this research was that Michael Norton and his colleagues replicated the study in a setting that wasn't done on top tier university students in America. In fact, they took this finding to Uganda in a part of the world that's obviously significantly poorer than people at Harvard. And then they replicated the study using Ugandan currency, but otherwise the procedure was very, very similar. And the incredible thing was that their results were robust, consistent in both settings, which suggests that this relationship between giving our money away in a meaningful way and increasing our own happiness seems to be a kind of fundamental, universal trait that all humans share. So in summary, money can buy happiness, you just have to spend it on other people other than yourself. So with this in mind, and because it's Christmas, tomorrow I'm going to be buying some groceries for the local food bank so that the hungry people in Coventry don't have to be quite so hungry this Christmas. So I'll see you tomorrow. And good morning. Just like that, it's the next day. We're about to go to Aldi, but before I go, I thought I'd show you this. If you've ever wondered what do food banks actually need, it actually tells you on their website. They say urgently needed food items, and it's all of these tomatoes, rice pudding, vegetables, potatoes. That's really useful because they really need these things and they don't need these things. Baked beans, pasta, cereal, and soup. So stop donating baked beans to food banks, guys. They don't need them. So we're gonna go try pick up those items. So I'll see you at Aldi. I'm sitting in the car park right now. 
And for those of you outside the EU, Aldi is a budget supermarket that we have here that sells the basic foods really, really cheaply, which is good because that means I can buy a lot more with a lot less. And I don't have Mr. Beast level YouTube money, so I'm going to be uh, buying as much as I can here at Aldi. Now I am going to film this next part on my phone just because I feel really weird carrying a camera around a supermarket. So uh, I am on my own as well, so I don't know if the camera work is going to get a bit choppy, but we'll see. All right, see you in a bit. Okay, so back in the car, and this is my haul. My car is now full of tinned food, but this, we got basically everything on the urgently needed list. Uh, and all of this food, which was which was a whole big trolley full of food, only came to just shy of a hundred pounds, which is insanely cheap. So uh, I hope this really helps the the food bank out. Okay, so because it's a weekend, the food bank is actually shut and I can't go there myself to donate the food. But what I can do is go to my local donation point, which is just at the Tesco next door, and basically just leave the food in the donation bins they got over there. So that's what we're going to go do now. We're going to carry all of these tins over to Tesco um, and leave them in the donation bins. <laughs> this is my trolley, which I'm going to go take to Tesco and donate, but <laughs> the way these tins are stacked is so dodgy. Oh my goodness. Alright guys, so that's it for today's video. I just left the, the trolley of food at the donation point with the security guard there. And I encourage you guys to go do the same. You know, hopefully it helps people out and let's spread some, some joy, some happiness this Christmas and maybe it'll make you feel happy as well. So, you know, you can do it for selfish reasons or non-selfish reasons, but either way, it's a good time to go help people out. Alright, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.